Hey, we're on. Okay. It's not over yet. <laughs> okay, well, apologies for the late start. I've been switching everything off and on again. Um, that's definitely time for a hardware upgrade. see everything there. I'm having to do this at some great distance. Shiny, less shiny, shiny. It's less shiny. Good. Okay. Um, I have begun, I believe. No, that was okay before. I've got to remove this too much. Um, Oh, leave me mark. <laughs> yeah, well, this is an old toy, this one. Um, I built this for uh, classes because I had a room where the light would change dramatically from one moment to the next. I'm trying to teach people still life when the sun suddenly comes out and all the light changes to <laughs> coming from a completely different place was not impossible. So I built these boxes uh, so I could control the light um, individually and keep it the same from week to week. But I've never really used them since. I've used them as screens. They're sort of nice little U-shaped screens when they're on their sides, uh, which is good for exhibitions and stuff. Plonk, ta-da, right, we have a canvas, that's in, good, um, now having a look at the space behind, I can start to get some ideas of things I could put in it, so I was thinking of some glass, and uh, something I've, uh, even to other people to have to deal with. I've never really tried myself, is this Chambord bottle. Now the tricky thing here is lighting. So I'm gonna go for some rather more extreme lighting so that you can actually see what I'm doing too. Um, I don't know how apparent that is. this. Let's see if it does now. Well, it still looks very dark on my screen. I don't know how it looks on yours.
Okay. Hopefully that will behave itself now. We will see. Hi Viv. Oh, okay, see Jason's here. Evening Jason. Well today I thought I might have a little go at this um, Schomburg bottle. Uh, I can't even remember what this stuff's meant to taste like, but... Um, <laughs> it could do with something else to go with it. So it's an interesting enough thing on its own, and working on this sort of very dark um, what would you call it? So this low low key lighting is a is a tricky one. I want everyone to be able to see what's going on. If I turn one of these off, I'll just turn them both down a bit. How does that work? Let's see if the camera adjusts. Ah, you can see better what I'm doing behind now. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and it needs something else to go with it. Uh, I'm thinking something less glamorous than a, a liqueur bottle. Um, so any suggestions? This is rather fun, isn't it? I have got, what have I got? It's a reflective cocktail shaker. How does that look? Now from where I'm sitting, that does look okay. Uh, from where the camera is, it looks like it's overlapping a bit. Maybe overlapping's better. Maybe I'll move it further back, create a bit of a background. Hmm. So this is quite fun. Again, not much of a journey here. Mind you, the bottle's empty. So perhaps this should all be uh, <laughs> lying around. No, then we'll have no idea what it is. What about the other side? Oh, I quite like that. It still needs something, something a bit more poetic. I'm not quite sure what. Um, hmm. Let me have a think. <laughs> Not the carpet. Uh, the cat. The cat isn't well behaved enough to stay in one place for very long. Um, I'm guessing you've overheard me call him Mr. Moggins. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, that's what he gets called around the house, generally. Uh, maybe a bit of colour. I think some colour. I think I need some colour. You know what I think I need? Oh, I think a book would do it. And I think it needs some blue. A bit of blue. How about... AJ Eyre, The Central Questions of Philosophy. Uh, as you can see quite fond of his dog. Dog perhaps isn't quite as cooperative as my cat is even. So, uh, well that's rather good isn't it? Or is it? Catherine, away from North Carolina. This is good. It's early in the morning for you, isn't it? Oh, actually, no, it'll probably be afternoon for you now. Yes. Uh, hmm. No, not quite happy with that. I've got some better looking books. Um, let me have a think. So 
I've got an old favourite, which is the history of architecture, which is rather good. Oh, yeah, perfect. That is perfect. Whiskey Galore by Compton Mackenzie. Uh, oh, right, I've just realised you can't see any of this. Yeah, that's rather good. I might go for a bit more of an angle. Does it need two books? Or would one do it? Yeah, that's a good reflection into the into the what's it thing there. Okay, I think that's what I'm gonna go with. I think my mind has been made up. Um, I'm gonna need paint and things like that, aren't I? Yeah, I told you I wasn't quite ready today. But it's so nice for everyone to come along. Lovely to have you here in the studio with me. And um, yeah, looking forward to doing something. Now, ah, have a bit of me oil, that's a good sign. So let's put my brushes there, that's fine for that. Oh no, oh no, it's okay. Oh, I thought I'd, thought I'd let a good one um, dry up with paint on it. Sometimes that happens, you just forget about them. Uh, right, yeah. A bit of cloth would be good, but I think I'm gonna go for a really plain background just so it's the objects at the front, otherwise I'll confuse it too much. And it's really just gonna be a plain dark with just the lights from the objects and the colors what little colour there is. But there's this orange and this blue, which is rather nice. I'm wondering how much I even need that cocktail shaker. I'm still not making my mind up about this, am I? Um, but this is part of the process. I like the fact that everyone's getting involved with some ideas, though. Hmm. Well, I can always change it even after I've started. Uh, it's not super urgent though yet. I get it absolutely bang on right at the beginning. Um, so I'm still wandering around looking for my palette knife, which I have. At least my good one. I've got one there on the palette before you point that out. <laughs> I'm aware that that's there. But I've got my favourites. Oh, what did I do with that? Here it is. That's the full one before. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can get with that, I think. Just gonna give the palette a quick scrape. Mind your ears. Yeah, we don't need any of that. In fact, I'll just take it off here. Just give that a quick clean. Get all the excess piles of paint off it. time I clean off a load of paint and then I mix exactly the same colour all over again to use. There we are. But really it's just about having a having a clear space to mix in. Okay. So I can put out some more paint if I need it later on. But to begin with I can use what's here. That should be fine. Uh, yes, an odd number of uh, items is good, but ultimately, I I think it's a matter of there being uh, three is the magic number. So if the eye stops naturally in three different places, and it's that little journey I'll be looking for at the beginning. Yeah, that bit of space, I quite like that. Um, and I'm going to push that. I'm going to push that 
uh, cocktail shaker back again. So yeah, an odd number of uh, items means there's three places where your eye moves. But sometimes a single item can have more than one part to it, which means that your eye is sort of traveling uh, in, a, in a sort of a separate thing. Even if you look at really huge paintings that have got like masses of stuff going on in them, each individual part will have, usually have a nice little rule of three. And if it doesn't have by design, it ends up with it simply because that's how the human eye wants to work. Um, I'm just cleaning some white spirit here. Yeah. Yeah. Clean thinners is a, is a bit of a must, really. No way around it. Because I'm painting all the time, I do tend to leave my brushes in the thinners, which you shouldn't do. But we've all got our uh, our foibles, haven't we? So after a while, you learn to manage them. So every artist probably does something horribly wrong, which you should never do, which is against all the rules, um, and totally gets away with it because they've been doing it for years. So they've, been, they've figured out how to. How to fix the you know, rather you know fix their um, the results of the problem rather than address the root of the problem itself. So yeah, uh, if I'm guilty of anything, it's um, not taking proper care of my brushes, which are, I'm always annoyed by when I realise I've done it. As I just did earlier, I thought I'd wrecked a perfectly good brush. Um, Some clean spirits, good. Good. Exciting. bottles for the old spirit to get into so the sediment whatever you call it can settle and it leaves clean spirit which you can pour off the top which is why it's quite rare for me to visit a bottle of clean spirit in there like that. Hey, kind of okay so little rule of threes then let's give that a go shall we that's a decent sized brush. Just slosh a bit of spirit there. Let's pop some blue in it. I'm going to go for a bit of quite red underpainting here, I think. Um, so there's some crimson in there. Uh, because I feel like I'm going to be doing quite a few sort of warm colours on, uh, sort of, yeah, cool colours on top. So a bit of warm showing through underneath isn't a bad thing. So, talking about three different places, three different places where the eye stops. Well, definitely the top of that bottle. There's this highlight down here, so maybe that's more of a line. So that's sort of giving me a path. But when I get down to this area, maybe that's an area rather than a point, then where do I go across to? And I'm going to be going across to where this colour ends and the bottom of that. And then I travel back up. Um, I'm going to make less of the highlights on that. Well, I think I am. Um, yeah. So I'm, and I'm at the corner of that book. Also seems important. But that's going to, I'm going to put that over here somewhere. Um, and then I'm going to travel. If I travel back along the line of the book, it sort of takes me back up to the top of the bottle. So I've got a few little movements going around. So I've got one that's a bit like that, and then. It sort of travels back up, and then I've got another which sort of goes along the bottom and then round back in, kind of thing. And then I've also got this little journey up here that comes back down over here somewhere. And I've got this journey which goes all the way down to the bottom and then comes up 
to here. So I've got these little journeys around. Um, and I can make these marks quite freely at the moment without having to think too much about whether it's any good, but gradually a sort of a story will appear. So I could say, well, you know, I could sort of travel across the middle of the bottle and, and you know, I've got this little sort of zigzag along the back of the book in the middle of the bottle. That's quite fun. And as it travels down, I've got these little highlights. Yeah, I travelled through that highlight earlier. And then here's the top of my bottle up here somewhere, somewhere in that area. But I, I want my eye to dance around this bit, you know, a little bit. And as it comes round to the underneath of the book, there's the front of the book around there somewhere. And then it travels back along this line somewhere. And then it travels up this shaker thing. And I've got this negative space, that's rather fun. So if I find this negative space and start with that, How is that? Not too bad. And there's that negative space under there that balances it out quite nicely. So that's going to give me the bottom of my bottle there, which feels a bit too low. I want more reflections. So I'm going to move that up a little bit. So let's do some of those little journeys again. If I come down here, and then I want my highlights to be, I want my bottom of my bottle to be there. And as I come across, that's the angle of my book. And then as I come back in, there's that little swoop there. So that's the angle of the book, which is going to be, it's going to give me a similar kind of thing here, but that space is going to be bigger. That's going to be reclaimed a little bit. I haven't blue tacked this down yet. I'm going to have to do that. And oh yeah, that's pretty good. And I've got that blue that comes out here and that sort of shape. And then there's the edge of that shaker. And if this is the top of the bottle over here somewhere, is that where it is? Yeah, about there. So let's clear a little space there. It's rather nice. There's my highlights. That's that little journey around the bottle from underneath the book. It goes around there somewhere, isn't it? There's another negative space on the other side. Okay, I'm starting to really see this now. Yeah, something around there. Oh yeah, that was the book, wasn't it? So it's more space than underneath. There's that negative space in there. That's where the shape of the reflection is going to go. And similarly from the corner of that book, that's going to go down there. Good, right. Just to be uh, a bit different, I'm going to uh, get some of that, more of that alizarin crimson and I chuck a little bit of viridian in it now, sticking with all the dark colours and I'm going to look for my darkest darks within that sort of shape and there's this shape here, so that's sort of negative space, there's that shape there, that's quite dense and dark, it sort of follows the edge of that round. Good. There's that bit in here. That's over there somewhere. Don't get too carried away with that shape. That's a reflection. And it gets darker down here. Right. Uh, no, the canvas board hasn't been prepared before starting this time because it's a canvas board. Um, it's already got a sort of a limited amount of absorbency and I want some dead colour in this. So there's what, there's a thing called the dead layer, which is sort of putting in a thin layer of paint 
with the knowledge that it will sort of go a bit flat. Um, it's establishing a sort of a, a layer of colour, um, but not doing too much sort of, uh, yeah, not, not thick paint in any way. Um, and so this has got just enough absorbency to create that dead layer. Um, and then the, I'm going to use some quite thick impasto to, um, uh, you know, put the highlights on and the strong colours that that really do this journey for me. Which I'm kind of discovering as I go along. Right, is that thin enough? Let's chuck a bit more in there, that's probably too much, isn't it? But now as I start to establish that, that's there. That's there, I'm getting my drawing in now. That's that bottom of the book, that's a little shadow bit. Okay, thin that a bit. Is it too much? Okay, nice bit of negative space. There you are. A little bit of triangulation going on under the surface. Let's get a bigger brush on that. Now this is going to throw it around all over the place. But it will at least get rid of the last of that white of the canvas. Sorry, Jeff, just, just trying to chuck it across the room here. There you are. So I've, I've established some amount of light and dark and a hopefully a bit of a balance. I, I keep wanting to tighten up the drawing and then I keep resisting because it's not that important. In fact, even in here, I got rather carried away with sort of thinking of that as light. This is light, but it's not that light. And edges. So yeah, I'm not sure about those edges at all. So obliterate those, but I can still see the rough shapes where they went in. And that is a sort of a beginnings of a, a drawing layer, really. Let's go back to this other brush. And let's pull, let's pull a few of those lights out. So I had some lights in there. Whoa, see, it's not very absorbent at all, this surface. lights off. Maybe a bit of there. There's definitely a few in here. And I'm balancing them up with where that book goes. Just trying to think of the biggest shapes. Again, I keep doing an edge. I must resist that edge. I don't need it yet. Going to start to happen on its own when I build out these shapes. So yeah, that that's probably quite vague and unsure, um, but that's all right. I want it to be, I want it to reflect how certain I am of what goes where, which at the moment is not very certain at all. I've got a pretty good idea. I've got methods I, I can use to find out, which are, which can be an extension of, um, yeah, that's dark behind there, an extension of the process I've started here. Yeah, now if I get that 
shape of light, a rough shape of light in here. And in there. See, again, I want to do the edges. I mustn't, I must resist. But that's looking like an edge. Okay, I'm going to let this, uh, let this spirit evaporate now. Uh, and I'll mix some colours ready to go on when it does. Super. Right, now the big one is going to be that dark. And that dark is... Um, well, actually, I'll start again. Whenever we see something that we we could potentially turn into a painting, we're seeing a range of tones, tonal values, quantities of light. Um, so here, it's actually very dark and shady. Um, if I moved the camera back and it was light outside, you wouldn't see the inside of this at all. A few little glints of light because Compared to sunlight, none of this is very bright at all. Um, so that would push the whole thing into a very small, we call it like a low key range of tones. As it is, because I'm looking at this in isolation, this can now fill the whole range of tonal values from deep blacks to, um, to bright whites. Uh, nice. Um, yeah, and that's, so that's really what I, I need to get my head around to get the colours mixed right. A big part of it is going to be tones. Now, most of this is dark colours with just a few bits of light. So I often think of it like a, like a, um, like a river or a lake or something, um, which is black on one side and bright white on the other. And I might want to choose just a few tones that will do most of the job in my picture. So I can say, well, what's all the background? Well, that's all near the black side. So that's like a stepping stone because there's a few bits that are a bit darker, but only a bit. So that's a stepping stone, not very far from the black shore. And then the bright whites are right over on the other shore. But where's the other bits in between? Where are they? They're much closer to the dark shore, but it's a matter of how far. And so rather than this infinite range of uh, tones, I end up with a few stepping stones that land in particular places, particular tonal jumps. So it might be a little skip to the first one and a giant leap to the second one, or a few short skips and then a big leap. And um, keeping it simple like that is a, is a really good way to start. Um, it's also quite good to actually mix those tonal ranges, um, even try them out on a little piece of paper or something. So here's it. Here's a good way to go, actually. I'll, yeah, I'll do that first. Uh, now the black I'm going to mix, I'm going to mix quite a sort of a chemically black. So I'm going to stick with that alizarin and viridian mix. Um, I won't find out until I add some white to the mix I make, whether I've got the balance right. Um, this is where a glass palette with white or gray paper underneath is useful. But um, you can get an idea. You can, when you see it sort of spread thin, you probably can't tell from there. That's quite green, and that rather suits me, actually. So that's pretty much my black, and that's really, really dense, so I don't want to go anywhere near that, but I'll put this on this side of the palette. And then over here, I'll take some white, and I'll just let what's on the knife tone it down. So the lights have to be a bit darker than that to be the right jump from the bright whites. So let's take a little bit more of that. Now that's probably a bit too far. So yeah, maybe somewhere in between. Let's put that in the middle. And we'll adjust that once I, once I feel like it's correct. So that's a tone that will support 
bright white highlights on the top. And then that middle one, see the green? The green is going to have a similar kind of tone to that. Uh, and then, you know, so those lights in here are probably going to be somewhere around here. There's like darker spots in them. Um, similarly on the, uh, the reflections on the, you know, the light parts and the reflection of the book. They're going to be a bit darker than this, but not much. But then we've got these bits of light catching in the glass. Uh, the spine of the book. The, these tones down in the base. They're all going to be a bit darker, quite a bit darker. And I definitely want them to be closer. So I can see I'm making my little stepping stones here. I want it to be closer to this than it is to that. At the moment that feels like it's roughly in the middle. So, if you want to uh, keep your phone open so you can keep an eye on the comments as well, that's um, been watching with some interest <laughs> the, the saga of trying trying to get this on a bigger screen unfolding. Yeah, if uh, if you use um, YouTube on your telly or anything like that, you can you can put me on the telly. Okay. That's, that's my dark. That's gone a little bit red, but like I say, I'll, I don't mind some slightly warmer darks. So let's put some of that in there. Okay. So tonally, that works quite well. So I'm going to leave these tones here and I'm going to pull the colours off them and, uh, and keep an eye on whether something's light or dark enough. In a similar way, I can think of a few places to stop around the colour wheel that will give me the colours that I want, um, rather than sort of trying to mix each individual one. These greys are actually quite good for this. The green, as, as I said, is sort of at the lighter side of things. Um, this is around like these tones around here and in the glass. And in some of this, and then that's the point. How much further have I got to go? Yeah, and then I think I've got two halves to this dark here. I've got a slightly lighter one. Let's take a little bit of that, and I've got a shadow that sits into that. So even within this very limited tonal range of this little setup here, which doesn't have loads of light falling on it, I've got some quite subtle, tricky balancing acts to do um, in terms of mixing the right tones. But that's all right. I'll go with that. So I'm going to do a background tone. And it's going to be pretty much this. Uh, so, well... I might have to put a bit more paint out. Let's use up what I've got to begin with. Or well, is that a good idea? Maybe some fresh paint might be a better idea. I think this is starting to form a skin. Oh, I can pick the lumps out later. Oh, look at that. That's just lovely. Now, the interesting thing is when you mix viridian green and alizarin crimson together, you get a kind of purpley colour because they're both on the blue side of things, but really very little yellow content, which is going to leave you in the in the area of purples. Now let's chuck some white in that, see what it does. So I want that to be greener. See how well this shifts it. Yeah, that's good. A bit more maybe. The things I'll do all this, and then the moment I put any on, <laughs> won't necessarily work. So this is what I was saying before was going to be my dead layer. If you're wondering about me looking around, I've set this up with this. This has got a camera's got a filter on it, so you can see the colours without it being all shiny. However, it's lit from above, so I'm having trouble seeing it without the shine on it. 
that's that's okay tiny bit lighter just a tiny bit we've gone too far no that's okay so I haven't gone as far as this one no not quite a bit more green so I'm gonna have to uh, refresh the green a bit Halo sign in. Can't get the lid off there. Right, I'm going to be using a ton of that, I reckon. It would cause me great pain to put that, that amount of. Uh, it's an actual viridian, but one day when we prices go up. <laughs> Uh, and this will give me a, a context within the whole image. Um, and again, I don't have to be absolutely exact with the drawing at this stage. I can still keep the edges soft, not try and be too um, perfect with those. There's just still a bit of spirit on that brush. I'm just going to start a mix here, see if that works. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm just going to put in some around here. Yeah, that's good. And it will darken up as it goes further into the back. But for the moment, that's the lighter bits. So I'm just getting a rough shape and letting the reflections help me a bit. That's some of that negative space there. And there, and here. And that, something like that. Yeah, there's brown bits up here as well, but we'll come back to them later. That red is still a bit wet on the surface, but that's okay, it's giving me a nice, uh, Of warmth coming through. Okay. Uh, what about over here? So that's that reflection bit. This is all a reflection bit. Maybe that should be further over. Yeah, I think it should. So again, keeping it simple. I keep seeing other details, so I've got to ignore them, not get distracted. A bit of extra thinners. Because, because I'm thinning this slightly. Ooh, just threw a great big glob of paint across that nearly landed on my phone. Because I'm thinning this slightly, it will make the paint spread further, but it, that when I say a dead layer, it will also create a sort of a surface that I can Uh, work other paint into. So until that's sort of all in, then what am I doing? What's this? That's all going to be extra shadow behind, so I'll move that up. Let's put in a bit of extra shadow behind. 
there, but that other than that, that will go a bit darker, I think. Actually, no, that'll travel up quite a bit. Okay, we can work more dark into that later on. As, as and when. Well, so let's get this blocked in. It's, it's at the moment it's pretty much impossible to judge whether the tones are right I mean you can see how dark this is in the overall scale uh, and yet on here it looks quite light it looks like a sort of a medium blue because there's nothing to compare it to um, so I'll put a bit of extra dark behind this um, this shape here that's my negative space Okay, so, so like I said, soft edges. Okay, now I'm going to get another little bit of spirit, and I'm just going to pick up that very dark from over here. And just put it in the corner. I'm going to work that in, and we should see a sort of a shadow up here. Yeah, yeah that was right. Second guessing myself. Hey, no, yeah, it kind of does its job, kind of. So I've got some extra shadow behind there. Again, it's mixing with what's on the brush. So for these darker bits in the middle, that's fine. Notice the Im immense respect I'm giving to the edges of these objects. It's just not important. And that's the other good thing about that dead layer is it would be quite sticky and flat. Um, I wouldn't do it with every painting, but for something like this, it, it should work pretty well. Okay, so I'm going to have to try and mix this darker again. So again, I'm sticking with my Viridian and, and uh, Alizarin. A bit of extra green here, just to cool down those shadows right in the background. So that's very dark. Okay. I'll pop that in there. Yeah, so that's very green in there now, which I, I quite like. Make sure that's properly mixed on the brush. I'm really just concentrating on what I'm seeing. That is a soft edge there. Okay. It gets darker over here and into the background. That light travels up a bit again, but where else? It was here. Here it seemed important. Again, just restore that shape in. Still got this other colour I can bring it back into, but anywhere else I need that. Okay, this edge here, that's going to get darker. There's a dark edge underneath there. Some of those reflections. Some of those shadows. Some of this sort of foreground bit here. Again, you see it's mixing with the, the background colour now, so that's all right. So I'm just going to get all that filled in. Keep the edges soft. None of it's going to be that important later on. Okay, let's pick up a bit of this. A bit of what's left there. Thin it ever so slightly. Let's get that blocked in over here. So I haven't done the drawing of this this um, cocktail shaker yet, and uh, 
it's not yet time to do that. And keeping all those colours cool, which is a personal choice, um, if you went to an atelier and said, I want to do a classical still life, they might say, no, you should never do that. You should always use warm colours because blah, blah, blah. Um, but I like it, so um, there you are. I'm going to make it a slightly darker towards the edges and a bit deader as well because it sort of creates a bit of a fade out if you've got a cloud of light ah, come on get in doesn't seem to want to go on there um, then then that can help things a great deal this bottle is definitely going to move across Um, okay, let's go one lighter now. So I had a bit of this up. We'll bring some other colours into this later, but just to give us the basic forms. Now, just doing those reflections, I can use this sort of slight detachment to really find my way into some of these other shapes. That's that's the other shape there, and that's the edge of the bottle. As long as I can bring that in. And I can just move the paint around on the surface a little bit. I'm gonna go right over those edges. Um yeah. Okay. I'll clean the brush, which is probably a really bad idea. drawing just a little bit here if I can find that edge and find that edge that will be vertical that will come out of there I'll just drag that dark across a little bit which makes the edge of my cocktail shaker go there and that's the top of my bottle That's the straight edge at the side of it. That would be around the bottom. And that's pre that's pretty pretty good, pretty good. Uh, well, something like that. Okay, now I've got that. Now I'm going to do a slightly warmer version. I'm going to use a bit of naphthol red, just because I'm cheeky. I'm going to make this slightly orangier version. And I'm going to use it for these dark areas here, and this should help jump it forwards a little bit. Back here is this sort of outline of the label. a bit of that as well, which is a slightly darker version. All the darks in this, this thing here they sort of blend into that background. I'm not entirely sure where they go. So it's not too defined. As a result, Yeah, it's quite fun. Put a bit in there as well. Okay, before I get too carried away. Put some of these shapes here, put a bit of warmth into those too. Ok, 
Okay. Let's see. So now those tones are hopefully making a bit more sense. Me. Okay. Let's uh, let that warm up a little bit in the background there. Certainly in the foreground. Let's put some warmth into that shadow there. And keep it really simple. No, not too much, but definitely down there, like that. Yeah. So I've got this, um, these other tones. Now this is where I, these are useful. So I'm going to match it up with this tone here. Oh, now I need some more yellow ochre. Yeah. for this, I think that'd be good. Oh, there's a bit of blue hanging around. That's going to be lumpy, I don't need that. I've stopped painting and started cleaning my palette again. I have in the past had in my studio a little sign that just says, what are you supposed to be doing? <laughs> Which I think is quite useful. Uh, I'm going to try the Jackson's one, see what it's like. is slightly creamier, hasn't got quite the same pigment load that um, the Michael Harling has, but I think, you know, people bang on about pigment load and it's, it's good, sometimes you need it and sometimes that's the main thing you're looking for, but sometimes having a less intense paint, as long as it's made with good oil and it's well milled, um, can be a lot closer to what you want almost all of the time. Um, and in terms of, there we are. Can I put some of that on? You see, that's much darker. I'm going to mix that in with it, warm it up as necessary. So that yellow ochre carries a bit of light with it. And chuck some. Red in there, and that looks like a really sort of dark brownie colour. But I mix this up with what's on the brush and pop it in this place where it goes. It looks much lighter. There's room for a few little sort of gold colours here. So there you are. That's that started a little theme there. Um, I can put that into here as well, that'd be good there. Uh, definitely a bit into here. Some of that reflective stuff, it's all a bit yellow, uh, sort of greener above it. But yeah, some warm colours. Uh, where else can I see it? Definitely in that base there. Let's chuck some in there, that works. Um, Actually, even at the bottom of that shape. Again, resist the edges, resist. Works quite nicely to warm that up. Too red for that, really, but let's see what we can get away with. Um, where else? Maybe that gold will go later on. Yeah, I think it will. So there's uh, the reflection of the bottle condensed on the side of the um, cocktail shaker. There's a little bit on the top. 
might be a bit higher up. And that will do for that for the moment. Uh, yeah, so it's um, pretty simple stuff right now. What about in here? So this room's a bit more red in there later on. In there, and as it gets nearer the edge, now I was talking before about these um, these grey colours. Let's mix a greyer version of that. Let's put it by its neighbour. And so, what does this do here? Yeah, that works pretty well. What about here? Not bad. Um, could still go a little lighter, I think. That's all right. What about there? Yeah, that works very well. So I'm discovering some colours and tones as I go around. Much darker in there, but that dark will work itself out later on. Okay, even a little into that slightly lighter one here. See what that does. Mm. I think there's an edge of the bottle cap there, so I'm going to move that. Um, there's another little game to be played here, and that's one of discovering symmetry. I'll move the bottom of that base across. There we are. I see. Yeah, I'm working with very soft muted colours at the moment. Um, but again, this is still still dead layer. The paint's getting a little bit thicker gradually as I go along. Hmm. So if that's the centre of the cap, then there's something horribly wrong with the symmetry of this bottle. And that is, either that side is way too small, or that side is way too wide. So if I make that width there, carry that across, it's got to come right out. So I'm going to go into the light a bit now, and I'm going to stick with these, these warm colours and see how well I can do with that. Works remarkably well. Same here. A bit steeper. Whatever. Don't have to be too fussy. Not right now. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm nearly getting drawn into outlines, and I do not want that to happen. I must resist that. I can do, I can go into this darker colour now, because I've already got paint on the surface, so I can keep mixing it in as I go. So if it's too dark, which it is when it first goes down. Yeah. I'm seeing this sort of little dent in the shape of the bottle. As that comes in. So again, here's another one. If that's the side of the base there, the side of the base there is all the way out here. There we go. Okay, so there's a few interesting discoveries being made. Again, keep those edges soft. Sort of travels up that direction, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I can go back into my slightly lighter bits here. It's all there waiting for me. Again, yeah, does quite a job of keeping that that edge soft. Get the top off that a bit. I'll put a few. 
few little highlights in there. That's good. Okay. Now I've got that on the brush. I'm going to go back to that sort of grey brown one and say, what's in here? That feels pretty good. Okay, that's that's a good colour that can do an awful lot of the job of, of what's happening uh, with this cocktail shaker. Put a slab there and a slab there. Hmm. Actually, that's just the edge of a dark area. Then it gets lighter, and now we've got the reflection of the book. Yeah, so I'm starting to discover quite a few things about this image. I'm going to go back to that dark. Mix it in with this sort of browny red I made. Let's just darken that as much as it needs to go. Actually, putting the painting in there. Which is funny, I wasn't expecting to sort of land on the right colour this soon, but there it is. There's sort of interesting little shapes, and I'm finding them, they're, t they're turning up for me now. Working into the existing surface. That's the, so we can see the back of the label on that bottle. You can see the edge of it there. And there. Go back into the lights. And sort of expand them out a little bit. Uh, it needs to go even a bit further. Keep that, keep that warmth to it. Yeah. I keep thinking I might have made this bottle too squat. If I have, yeah, I might have to move everything up a bit. Yeah, so I think the neck of the bottle might go up here. Close to the top here. But I'm not going to do continuous lines to fix it. I'm just going to put in a few individual marks. And also sort of move that shape up there. See that light behind. There's a little bit green, isn't it? Okay. Make a slightly greener version of this. And again, it needs to be lighter. Use some more of that grey to lift it up. Ha! Ah, that's, that's so funny. It's just, it shouldn't really work, but it does. That green all the way along here. It's actually a little bit there. And a whole lot in there. Where else? Where else is it? It's in there a bit. That bit. Okay, we're getting some cleaner colours now. Where else can I see it? Well, maybe it will work for that. Reflective colour in there. Maybe that's not dark enough. I can put other darks in later. But this bit round here, I think it works 
works quite well. Which is then going to lead me into... I haven't got the angle of that book right. It's not too far off. Okay. Um, there was that light I was looking for across here. It seems to sort of travel into that, so that works. Okay. Yeah. Let's do little sections of that shape down there. That's the light at the top of it. This will be the light at the bottom. Okay, clear a little space. Okay, there's some really considered colour choices to be made. Um, to get this label in. And what I don't want to be doing is rushing it. Uh, so I'm going to give myself some more context before I do that. much redder. Um, what about under here? That seems redder too. Some lovely shapes in this glass. I'm just going to try and bring some of them out. As I do, hopefully, I can see some other bits and pieces. So there's some deep reds. There's some really deep reds in here. See the little marks. There. There. It's funny little hieroglyphs. Rather enjoyable. Just in the middle. Maybe another one at the bottom of the label there. 
hopefully I can refine these slightly with the uh, with the, the sort of a lighter marks that go on top later on. That's that, I've got one here, I've got one here. Okay, and while I'm there, of course I can see it in this badge, this label. I'm just going to put that in as a fairly solid dark colour. There'll be some light to go around it later on. Not that big. And while I've got this dark red on the brush, I've got this part of the book label. That goes all the way nearly up to the top of the spine. Okay, and also I've got some bits and pieces in here. That's very dark. Kind of works into the underneath. Hi Josie. Okay. Simple, simple little strokes. Not trying not letting myself get too carried away. Not putting a colour where it doesn't belong. Just taking my time. And that ground, that sort of that dead dead ground that I put on at the beginning is now starting to mix into the paint on I'm putting on top as much as I need it to. Um, I can stop and sort of hold back and mix in a yeah mix in a um, yeah, mix up a darker uh, yeah, um, sorry not darker a uh, loose I'm trying to do two things at once here multitasking is not my strength um, oh yeah uh, I can mix a looser paint that will sit on the on the top it can either be oilier or it can just be thicker but then uh, there wouldn't be much I could do with it afterwards once that's done there's a lot of red down there there's quite a few bits up next to this keep it simple hmm oh you know where else it is and here I'm going to be really fancy. That's a lot of alizarin in there. So I take a little bit of that black that I mixed. I hope the colour comes through enough. So that's the top of that. Got that bit there. Got that bit there. I keep showing up. Great. Okay, well, while I'm here, I may as well mix this up into what would effectively be and look a bit like light red. I'll take a bit of this light as well. It's not brown enough, actually. Um, brown enough to be a light, a light red. Yeah, this is a bit more like it. So if I chuck some of that colour on top of here. Ooh. Delicious. Really soften the edge down. That darker version underneath. Use a bit of that for the reflection there. It's rather fun. Ooh. We've got these reflections here as well, haven't we? They're rather fun too. Definitely a bit of orange going on in there. Yeah. So yeah, I'm still looking around for places where this sort of darker red goes. Darker bottom edge under that. Hmm. Okay. In here. So now I've got this basic structure, and I can just kind of 
keep following these shapes and popping them in. Right, this deep red here is going to be perfect for going in this dark sort of treacly liquid. Oh, is that too much? Slightly lighter version. Borrow a tiny little bit of champion yellow for. Um, sort of create this shape on top. Is that too yellow? I think it will be. Well, I'll pop that on. No, no, not sure about it. It needs to get a lot redder. Let's see how red I can make it and get away with it. Oh yes, quite red. Well, yeah, there's more of it. A bit in here. Get rid of that bottom edge. Um, okay, don't want to get carried away. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to have a change of subject now. And just mix up this green for this book. Now, if I remember, I was looking at the light for that. And actually, down here, for the dark version of it, I'm going to start off with some Viridian. Let's just mix the hue. <laughs> okay. And let's just blue it until it's closer to what we're looking at there. We'll keep a little bit of the dark version. It's pretty good. It's a really dense colour, so we're not going to need it to be that strong. So, let's get a bit of this grey and a bit of this green. And let's, yeah, let's pop them together there. Still quite purpley. Might do for the um the very dark greens. And if it doesn't, it might do for the shadows. Yeah, yeah, that will work for the reflection there. Probably pop a bit in there as well. Oh, you know what? You could do with some. Merry Christmas. Um, no, needs to be. I need to put some red in that. Just to neutralise it. Yeah, because it's much softer. It's also a little bit darker. Put more green in there. Just for extra colour excitement. There's my shadow colour. Okay, where else is it? No, we don't need it there. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm working too hard. Let's just get that shape. Create a bit of an edge here, that'll do it. Um, shadow behind that. And underneath it, actually. The 
there's some reflected colour coming back as well. Just on the other side of this. So I'm going to see how much I can get away with. to find the back edge of that book. Yeah, that's fun. Let's put a bit more on that sparring there. In there. Now, this isn't the final bit of doing this because there is uh, the matter of the page colour. So now that's in. So that's muted it slightly, picked up a bit of that red, softened it down. So I can do a few more of those sort of. No, even that needs to lighten up. So yeah, when you get to the top, it's got to be closer to this. It's still darker. So the very darkest bits, even that, will be a darker bit. Even that will be a darker bit. Okay. I'm going to pick up a bit more of this light. Seems to be a bit more forgiving. Is that underneath there? It's quite reflective. You know what? I can just put that in straight, I think. I can create a light edge along there. Ah, so if we can get a straight edge on the brush, that'd be good. Okay, now I need to go again. Let's make, make this much greyer. Yeah, okay, that's more like it. edge to go on that but in the meantime okay I want this to be simpler marks so I'm cheating a bit here putting on careful lines and then messing it up afterwards that's enough thing that illustrators do I mustn't <laughs> simple marks that do their job and then stop it and leave it alone okay but there's a book there now Give that a bit of an edge and a reflection. So actually, which means that's going to have to go straight up and be on there. Uh, which again is coming in with a few highlights. That'll do it. Not that corner. Still got that background colour. All good to go. I can pick up that, move it around a bit. Shut it in a bit. That's pinker and yellower. too light. Yeah, it needs to be yellow. A little darker there. Put some red into it. That 
think. Um, <laughs> how funny. Lighter at the edges there, and then we'll go in darker and slightly more purpley tint in the middle. Still looks too green. What we'll do. Does that look how I want it to look? No, it does not. Let's go back to this. Let's see if we can put some of that light back at the edges where it's needed. about it. No, it's sort of all right, isn't it? Mm. Mm. So while this is on the brush, thing happening which is the edge of this it's pretty much the same as the background it's a little bit darker To there, a bit more into here as well. And you define those shapes at the bottom. Um, I'm just working what's here. Shadow isn't deep enough now, is it? Ah, so many things to fiddle with. Okay, it's definitely time to have a cup of tea. Pause for a moment. That wants to be a good, solid, dark line. Still not dark enough. Mad. Because there's quite a lot of paint on the surface now. Right. That will do it. You stick a bit more green in there. Maybe it doesn't need it. Definitely some warmer blacks in here. That really define that shape there and the edges of uh, well, shapes of some of these marks. Yeah. 
to darken up a bit. So at the end of this, I can pretty much put black and white on top of it just to push and pull those tones and that, uh, and it should work quite nicely. Look at that. Yeah. Chuck some blue into this just in the corner. See what I can get away with. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice. No. Again, little highlights. They're too green, that's too green. I'm going to leave that there. I might be able to use that later on. Slightly. No, it's just gone completely red. Right, definitely time for a break. I'm going to make a cup of tea. I'll be back in five. And um, and I also I've just realised a horrible error I've made with the book. That is my, oh, so much steeper. Unbelievable, I'm completely incompetent. Come on, come on, yeah, you do. Oh, what a relief! <laughs>
Let's try again. Anyone left? Hey. embark on the finishing touches. Let me get rid of all the sort of the dead canvas at the bottom. Doesn't quite know what it's doing or why it's there. So I've got my shapes established now. Soften up all those edges. I'll put in the highlights and lowlights afterwards. Hmm. No, even that was too strong. cleaner here. It's quite weird that that's so orange in its reflection. It must be coming useful for something. Oh. Same thing. Here you go. And here. Really subtle, but it's there. That's the red bit, and then it goes a lot greener and paler. Yellow or even. So that was what I was just going to look at here, wasn't it? That's my yellow colour. I made way too much red. And it kind of goes in here. It's too orange. It works there though. I'm going to get a tiny bit of oil. Just to get this to flow a bit better. Put some simple shapes on. That's green underneath. I made this blue earlier. Put a little bit of that yellow in it. Is that too green? It's quite dark as well. How does that work? Is that too green? No, I think that's all right. No, it's too green. There's this little balancing act going on. That red so strong, I didn't need that to be that strong. Maybe that's more on colour. I think it is here. Okay, so I need to look around all over it now. So let's pop a bit of that on. Is that the right colour for that? 
actually is pretty much it needs to be a bit darker and over here it needs to be greener I've got my dark, let's make a darker version and I know what went in it there's a bit of these yellows and an extra bit of red So am I losing it totally? About there. Oh no, it's about right for that. Do the greener colour. Bit of that in here as well. And here. Okay. A slightly lighter version of that green colour is going to go in here. There's a really pale yellowy one right next to it. And again, none of it gets too bright because I need some distance to those highlights. That's too that's too is that too light? I think it's okay for the bottom. Hmm. It's also too yellow so I'll make a slightly lower chroma version of that also give me a little flash across here work that in a bit. And here, work that in a bit there. Okay, so where can I see that up the top? Made the neck of the bottle too short. That should be much taller. Do I want to fix that? I do. I do want to fix it. What else can I see this? Is there a bit in there? Yeah, there's some. A bit in there too. Anywhere else? A yellower version here. Oh, that's good. And go 
much darker into this. So I'm just using the colours that are already there. And I hope it will put together. Some kind of semblance of yeah, this needs to be golder as well. the bottom of that neck. No, these highlights go all the way up here. Simple marks. I'm just going to do a little zigzag down here. That's all it takes. That's the bottom of that. These little highlights will go all the way up to the top. And the goldy highlights. Get a bit of that way up. And go on this side and you go up from the top up there and some more up here back to the greeny ones I feel like I've made a pig's ear of this bit but time will tell Maybe it's all it needs. Maybe if I put the darks in afterwards, maybe that's the maybe that's the answer. I think that might be the case actually. Oh god, no, it's way off. Well, the bottom line is, if it's not good enough, it's not good enough. Go back to that green a second. If I lower that down here. That gives me more of a curve on that band. Which I want. I go across to my dark. Dark up some of these borders between the areas, especially in here. That's all like a deep burgundy in there. So let's do that. No, that's more like the colour over here. I might have to put those patterns back on afterwards. That's some of that. Those dark shapes. Okay, this is looking a bit better. We go into these blues in here. Let's put a few of those verticals in. That's a bit better. This is all greener and darker. Oh, this is actually a deep blue here. Let's get some more of that blue out. Yeah, much better. Dark stripes that'd be redder. Those dark stripes in there. We can also use that for a few of these patterns. Which is rather hard to spot. Put some 
Let's let the lid back in. Mm. Still a bit of a pig's ear. Yeah, what will save it is the highlights. So that's where I need to go now. So I've got up to this tone here. I put some of the green in that. That's the light tone right there. If I put some of this in here, hopefully it will do a job and it will still leave some room. few little magic bits at the end. There you are. I've got that pinky purpley colour to get to. Ah. Thanks Matt, you say the sweetest things. Well, really, I mean, I hope, if anything, this has described how one error after another with <laughs> um, half-baked attempts to repair the mistakes leads to a picture. Is that, that, is, that is pretty much that colour there. This is really interesting, actually. Okay, so I've got this badge colour. And then, yeah, so I've gone on a bit tonight, I know. So thanks for sticking with me. You're, a, you're all stars. <laughs> I've very much appreciated having some company doing this. Okay. Ah, you know where else I can see that? And that highlight down here. Let's keep that simple. Where else? Let's pop a bit over there. Is that right? No, 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 no. Behave yourself. <sighs> okay, I'll come back to that. Is that green? Is that sort of pinky colour? There's a bluey colour to go under there. So we get ever so slightly lighter on this, ever so slightly bluer. Let's pick a bit of that blue, blue in here. Okay, I can see some of that wandering down here as well. There we are. No, not quite. Haha, <laughs> that's fun. 
Let's do a few little reflection bits. The treble zone there. Okay, now I've got the right colour on there. He says, let's make that greener. get a bit creamier as I go along but I think the greeny bits in first and then it sort of fades out towards that edge. Mm. Darks here. Okay. Just get a bit carried away there. Okay, now while I've got that greeny colour on, I'll put a bit of that around. Ah, uh, where was I? Where's that purpley colour? Let's lighten it here. Okay, so I said I was going to keep this a bit fuzzier in the background. I'm going to stick with that. And a little bit more light. Let's bring up some of that yellow. That's too light. See, I lost my tonal range because I'm in Egypt. Okay, no, it was right for there though. Put that in. Um, what else? Right, so it's just bright highlights and shadows now. Um, I'm going to go back to my, my greeny gold here. Let's try and put in a corner there. No, that was ugly. Keep it simple. Okay. I'm going to get a different brush, a slightly smaller brush. There you are. I'm going to mix up some bright goldy colour. I'll do those highlights on there. Um, I have to be a bit more silvery than that.
Okay, you can see that's a jump from from that lightest grey I got. Uh, that's very kind and uh, generous of you, Jason. Thank you. Uh, this was a long one tonight as well, so everyone deserves a bit of a medal. Okay. All right. Before before I really get stuck in, do I want that lettering in? I think I do. I think I'm just going to pull out an even smaller brush. I've got my darks on there already. Let's go into this. I'm not going to do the individual letters. What I am going to do is straighten up that dark bit there. And let's put some ascenders and descenders in. Especially when they turn out darkest. A few cross pieces. Tops and bottoms. I'm just really just measuring these letters. ugly in places but mainly gets the message across also not quite right but there you go a few things to fix Hopefully I've got a sense of the direction changing around. That is as close as I ever come to doing proper lettering. Um, let's put in a few other dark darks. So we've got some there. Right, I need to really load this brush up now. Let's try that again. There are a couple of bits in there. Maybe a bit in there. Definitely a bit in there. I told you this would come alive when I put in the heavy, heavy shadows. There you go. Let's darken that down a little bit. Put a bit of extra shadow in there. Darken this down a bit too. This should really accommodate those bright highlights when they turn up. I 
Okay, something a bit like that anyway. Just darken down these bits in the middle. Okay, so that, that ridge there. Only a few very definite marks are going to rescue this. Let's put in a few extra row lights. Put some shadow in there. Put some nice colour in that, that's okay. Um, put some extra shadow under here. That's going to join up with that. It's a nice chunk there, I don't know why, but there it is. Some more of these goals. I've got a shadowy gold colour. I don't know what I'm going to do with that as well. Actually, that's that's not the light one. Some writing on that book. Does it need a darker version? Maybe a little bit in here. I'll do yeah, that to the light one. If I get the very light one, maybe brighten that up. We can put in a bit of a sparkle. Actually there. In here maybe. No way. I don't know to do that. So I've got, I've got this green, I really like that green. I'm going to bring some of it in here. A bit in there. Definitely a bit in here. Um, just a few of those highlights going in here. Talked about that little zigzag there. That's the job. Right, now I can do it. Little mark of highlights there. Little mark of highlights at the back. And that should give me a sense of this cap. You know what, I'm going to do a warmer. A row of warmer light just either side of this. There's some, there's some, just a few dashes. Now, if I go into this cooler light now, there we go. There's a few other places that it goes, there's a bit here. Um, oh yeah, oh, I've got these, this crowny thing here. It's quite fun, isn't it? It's got all the writing around the edge of it. That's as much as we're going to see of that. And... Oh, you can't see any of that. A little bit on here. So that's all got to get much darker. Make some dark red to go under here. Let me drag that down. Oh, I've got a lump in it. Okay, back to my green. Put some of that in here. Hey! So that's how empty the bottle is. Okay. 
Okay, last bits. It's going to start with the white this time. I'm going to have a yellowy white. I'm going to have a pinky white. And I'm going to have something somewhere in between. Let's go with orangey white first. <laughs> it's amazing the job it does. Yeah, a little bit on there. A little flick on the corner. Okay, where else can I see it? I can see a bit here. Um, where else? Oh, I've already got that little flick in there. A little bit in there. Oh, a couple of little bits in here. That's rather fun. Um, there's a bit in there. Just a reflection of the light. The yellow will go into that afterwards. There's a few places where that's going to happen. It's going to happen here. Oh, I need a dark colour as well. Let's pop a bit of that in there. And three little flashes of it here. Yes! Right. Oh wow, it's still here. Ah. Oh. Okay, let's go for the pinky one now. Pinky one won't be as strong, I might be working it into the surface a little bit more. But there is some, there's a bit. Maybe a little bit in here. Ah, there you are, just under there. Ah, I don't know, I think that was clumsy, but I'll, I'll let myself off. <laughs> As Bob Ross used to say, happy little accidents, which is a good ethos. And um, you paint like Bob Ross, kind of necessary, but what a lovely man. Okay, I'm spotting more here. Right. No, nothing more required there. So now actually I'm seeing a lot more purpley or grey lights. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to go like a halfway, not quite the brightest light. I'm going to pop a little bit of oil on it. Okay, and so we've got here. No, no. Like I said, I let myself off. Yeah, there's a few. Well, let's do a few little dancing marks. Then we don't have to be too accurate with this bit. Actually, if I make it too accurate, it'll make it too obvious. It'll bring it to the foreground, and who wants that? No one. Certainly not me. Push that bottom edge down, nice. Um, where was I? Yes, here. Okay, so I've got quite a few little bits in here. A few of those little shapes. Got a few little sort of marks going around. And a lot of this is sort of the underneath of what will be brighter marks going on top. Definitely around here, there's a few. There's a lovely bit of light going across there. There's a lovely bit just coming in from this edge. So I'm going to include that. And there. There's my, that green I was enjoying again. Coming back, I'm going to work it in a bit here. Increase that glow. That's. That's nearly enough. 
last thing I want to do. I'll shape that up. I'll put in that little reflection. There's a few yellowy bits here. Yeah. Last bit, the brightest whites, but they're not white white. And I want to keep it linked to the rest of the image, so uh, actually no, no, there's more there's more than one thing. There's this purpley one here. Let's buy some of that ultramarine. Okay. Now this is just really thick sticky pasto paint and these marks are kind of important they go in the right place because otherwise uh, this is this is what will throw the drawing if it will make the drawing not make sense so if these bits aren't quite right okay where else? Where does that go? It's definitely a bit over here. Again, I'm not going to be too fussy about this bit. Yeah, it's a little bit splodgy. That's okay. that up for a really nice bright shiny bit on top. Um, where else did this go? Let's put an extra bit of light around there. Ah, that's me, you know. Last few things to go on now. Yeah, there's a round brush. You don't see me get those out very often. Just going to put in a few of these marks. And a bit in here. Let's chuck that on and that on. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is working. Seeing an extra bit of dark now. So I didn't really go in with the really heavy shadows. They should all have been darker right from the off. Let's really chuck in the heavy, hairy ones there. No, it's just not getting dark enough. There's a bit. Oh, that's rather fun. Yeah, where else? There's a bit. Where else? A shadow under that book. Okay, so the last bit is the very brightest white highlights, and um, hopefully that would finish up the job. Okay, there's a bit of yellow in these. That's okay. I'll go with yellow. Very sticky paint here. That's good. <sighs> feel that don't feel like I've got that curve quite right. Anyway, 
of a fuss about it. There's a bit. There's definitely a bit there. There's a bit there. Hmm. Is that done? There's always another little fiddly bit, isn't there? <laughs> there you go. Uh, what have I missed? I'm bound to have missed something. Now there's a few little dots, but I, not all of them are spectacularly important. But there you are. Let's put that there. Little dots of light going across that shape. Tops and tails that label. Um, that seems to have moved, but that's okay. And there is a tiny bit. I've let this soften down really as I've been working into it. That's it. Um, Green or orange, I think the green. That's the that's gotta be the the signature colour of choice, isn't it? I'll put a bit of extra white in it. Just so it shows up. Oh, there you are, I like to. Right. Thank you ever so much to everyone for sticking with me tonight. See that straight? Yeah. How's that look on the screen? I'm a long way away from the screen. Yeah, it's all right. That was quite fun to do. Uh, it's fun enough that I forgot about my tea. Let's see if that's. Uh, completely cold now. No, that's all right. Brilliant. There's still things about that that I feel are a bit clumsy. I didn't really get what I wanted with the, the label, but like I said, I'm not going to beat myself up about it too much. And um, yeah, there's definitely something to it. Hmm. I told you there was always something to finish. <clears throat> I pick up that dark colour. I'm going to fix 
that edge. There, that makes all the difference, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I know what it is now. But what? Yeah. Well, what the hell? You can't have everything. Can't all be perfect all the time. Yeah, the shape of the bottle's wrong. I need to move the bottom down. I'll probably do that afterwards. So um, when I post a picture of this, it might it might look better. Who knows? I'm not going to make you sit through that. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe I'll go live again at about midnight. Um, <laughs> I know it's probably nearly midnight now. About two a.m. or something. I can see it. I can absolutely see it now. I'm such a fool. It's an easy fix as well. Mind you, it's close. Maybe if I were up like this. Yeah, maybe I was sitting more upright before. Yeah, I'll call it that and let myself off. Um, well, um, I think I might try the box again next week with something different in it. Maybe something a bit more organic. Um, the folded cloth might be an idea. Uh, Jason suggested I do something involving the carpet. Um, I might share with you something that I've been doing involving the carpet, <laughs> but you probably don't want to watch me finish that um, on the night because, uh, yeah, there might be a few weeks in that one. Um, but yeah, so thanks ever so much for joining me and for um, sticking around to the end. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week. So, okay, yourselves. Thank you.